when you're making work and you allow yourself to just be free, when you're not thinking too much about what you're doing, you're not in your head, you just allow yourself to be free. And then what comes out is just pure honesty. I, um, I use my body as a tool to paint and perform. That's an overall summary of what I'm doing with my work right now. And into that, the process of that involves me when I'm here in the studio, covering myself in oil paint. I use a very particular color of alizarin crimson. And, um, and then I press myself onto the canvas, usually on the floor. It doesn't necessarily have to be canvas, sometimes it's wood. And, um, and then I bring in other elements later. So I've got work where I've brought in old photographs of my grandmother, my great grandmother to create kind of time capsules where I'm thinking and talking about colonialism um, because where my family is from is um, Ghana. And I found an old photo of my great grandmother holding my grandmother as a baby that photo was taken in 1920 in what was then the British Gold Coast. And then in some of the work I've juxtaposed that with an old photo that was given to me, a found photo of a random English gentleman that was also taken in 1920. So again, in that case, I'm creating um, almost a mini time capsule. And then when I put myself on top of that, I'm bringing that into the present day, while at the same time thinking about and discussing all of those issues surrounding colonialism. What inspired you mainly? Well, okay, so I mean it was it was a long and painful process. Um, the short version is that prior to making work in this way, I was making what you what some people would consider to be quite traditional um, figurative work, which is where I was painting by hand and I was using the figure to express myself and to tell stories. And um, Sometimes personal stories, sometimes stories that were outside of myself. Mostly they were outside of myself. And I had a critique by a very good friend of mine who's a fellow artist who works here at Thameside Studios. Her name is Rachel Ara, and she's somebody who I respect and admire very much. And she looked at the work and she said to me, um, Adelaide, you're making really good work, but I don't feel like you're successfully saying what you want to say. And I know that you have a lot to say. So consider the absence of a figure don't think that you have to be a traditional British painter or Western world painter because that's not who you are, you're an artist. So think of other ways of expressing yourself. And, um, and that's what started me on this journey. And the idea came to me because I was sat with a, um, I was sat with a, um, a gallery owner that I know and um, we were looking through some work and he introduced me to an artist who he was representing who was also using her body but in a very different way to make work and then it just it just occurred to me that that's what I had to do and as soon as it occurred to me I got scared because um, it's, a, it's especially as a black woman in this country um, it could be seen as a controversial thing to do and I was scared of all of the associations and all of the weight that comes with representations of the black female body and how people would perceive me. And when I spoke to yet another artist friend of mine called Othello, Othello de Sousa Hartley, uh, he said to me, well, this is one of the reasons why you have to do this, Adelaide. Um, and because that is going to come into the conversation about this work and that's an important conversation to be had. So that's when I knew that I had to do it, so I threw myself into it. And, you know, that's the, the beginning of a long story. I have a bit of a giggle when people, I see people looking at the work and they oh, you look like you're dancing, you look like you're having fun. Yeah, I was. You don't know what I was listening to, though. But I think when it actually comes to showing that work, that I'm going to call it the particular, so I film myself every time I'm making work, right? So all I've got to do is look back over the film and see which one it was which song it was that I was listening to when I was making that particular piece and that's what it's going to be called. So when it comes to be shown, it's going to have the title of whatever song it was that I was listening to, yeah? So if it is uh, Gin and Juice, it's going to be Gin and Juice. One of the things that I do is actually interview artists. So for my, um, I've got a um, YouTube series called Art Discussion where I'm interviewing artists about their work and their influences, their um, the things that motivate them, how they overcome challenges, all of that kind of stuff. So I've built quite good relationships with a lot of artists and um, 
And so those interviews feed my practice and I hope that what I do with the interviews also feeds the practice of the artist. And one of the earlier ones is um, a very famous and very, very well respected artist called Sokari Douglas Camp. She's a Nigerian sculptor, she sculpts in steel. And when I interviewed her, I mean, she's an elder and she's somebody who I respect a lot. And when I interviewed her, I was just starting to make this series of work. So I showed her some of the earlier ones, and in fact, that's one of the ones that I showed her before it had all the, the writing and everything on there. And, um, and she looked at me and she said to me, Adelaide, what language does your parents speak? What languages do your parents speak? And I said, both my parents are Ghanaian, my mum speaks Ga Tri Fanti, and my dad speaks Tri. And um, she said, you need to baptise your work with the language of your parents. And that's what started the seed of me using the language of my parents in the work. So the first thing I did was go to my parents and say to them, I want you to give me three words in your preferred language that you feel describe me best. And my dad said, um, which means you are honest. And my mum said, um, um, which means you are clever. So... And they, they each said more stuff as well, but those were the two that I picked out and I wrote them on, on the work. And so that's why I titled that one after my dad, which is my dad thinks I'm honest because when I asked him, that's what he said. Yeah. So this one, this one, and the, those up there. And when I first started doing it, I was, I was scared. So I wasn't lying down on the canvas. I literally went like, went like that and pressed it on me, on me like that because I was scared. And so when it got to the end of that process, I had these small canvases and so I just did random things just to, to, not, get, to not get an obvious print of, oh, uh, this is a whole top of a woman's body or something. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to get something that was a bit more abstract and that's why I did it like that. I'm a part of a collective called the Black British Female Artist Collective or the BBFA Collective and we are six artists who um, pulled together to address the lack of representation of black British females um, in the British art scene, effectively. And when I say black British females, I'm talking about really diaspora women um, who in, in recent years, as I'm sure you will be aware, there has been a massive increase, huge increase in interest in African art. So you have Bonhams, Bonhams have been around for years um, doing their African art sales. Now you've got Sotheby's on board. And you, now you know it's big money that is involved. So there are gal galleries globally um, and art fairs, 154 Art Fair, um, who are really trying to get in on the game. And the, those of us in the diaspora are sort of left out of that conversation to a large extent. Not completely, but to a large extent. And that's, I think, driven by the, the fact that um, maybe the art world doesn't necessarily see us, see us as African enough. So we have to create our own spaces in order to be a part of that conversation and um, to produce excellent work that, that warrants the attention. Um, but I, I don't think, I, I think there is a need for collectives like the BBFA Collective, um, not only from the female perspective, but also from the point of view of, um, we, we need to get away from this thing of always trying to beg institutions or beg galleries or beg whoever has got the power and the money for a space um, and just create our own spaces. And that's what we're trying to do. Okay, now, so